morning, guys. Uh, welcome to the first of what I hope to be a series of just small little, not lectures, just um, small little videos where I pick a work of art uh, from your textbook, uh, uh, specifically a chapter, and just kind of talk about it and tell you why uh, it's one of my favorite works of art uh, from the chapter, from the textbook, or uh, in this case, one of my favorite works of art uh, of all time. Uh, in your textbook, this work of art is in chapter 16, um, and it is uh, classified as a work of early medieval art. Uh, what you're looking at here is a page from the Book of Kells, uh, specifically the page that depicts what's called the key Ro monogram. As you can see, it was made in the late 8th century, meaning the late 700s. And the medium is kind of interesting and it's worth pointing out. Uh, inks and pigments on vellum, which is actually not paper. Uh, this Bible is made out of uh, vellum, which as you can see is a type of leather. It's made of calfskin. And Luckily for everyone, uh, this work of art uh, today is in the collection of the Trinity College in Dublin. Uh, I'm on their website now. I am really big on showing you works of art in context, uh, not just a little slide in a slide presentation, but how the work would look in the room or in this case in the book itself. Uh, and I wanted to start with this work of art. It is one of my favorite pieces, but it also happens to be the inspiration for this uh, rather large and elaborate tattoo that you may have noticed on my left arm. And the fact that I wanted to get this large and colorful elaborate tattoo of a work of art tells you that uh, it is something that's very important to me. It's a work of art that I enjoy immensely. And yeah, I thought I'd take a moment and tell you about what the work is and uh, why I decided to permanently carry it around with me. So let's take a look at the book. Right, so this is the digital collections of Trinity College Dublin, and you can see here all the pages of the Book of Kells, and they've been scanned in extremely high resolution. I love this website. You can get way up in there. Uh, and I kind of like looking at some of these early and late pages, because then you can really see that this book is printed on skin, basically, not paper pages, and you can see the areas where it's been stitched together. Uh, this book has really been through the runner. Uh, it was first created uh, in Ireland and um, was started in a monastery, in um, a monastery called Iona, which is an island, um, and later was moved to Kells. We're not exactly sure um, at which monastery the book was completed, uh, but today it's just known colloquially as the Book of Kells. So you can see it has uh, about 340 pages called folios, and each folio uh, can be divided into the uh, recto, R, which means the front of the page, and verso which is the back of the page. If you were reading the Bible, the recto is on the right-hand side and the verso is on the left. Um, and, ah, gosh, I just love this book. I love this website because you can really pull in there. The thing that amazes me is how detailed this book is. Every single page is just clustered with figures and shapes and dots. Honestly, you could just randomly pick a page in the Book of Kells and I could see it being a tattoo that I would want to get. Oh, it's so good. Gosh, this book is so good. Look, there's a cat. I just kind of randomly picked a page and there's an awesome green polka dot cat with a tail going through its legs. Gosh, this book is awesome. Um, the work of art that's in your textbook and on my arm is page 34, and it is the recto of page 34. Let me just scroll up. <laughs> 34R. Bam. All right. So this, as I said, is the key row monogram. And let me tell you what that means. Let me go back to my slides here. Okay, so it's a little hard to make out. You just look at the page and it looks kind of messy, uh, but this is a letter. Uh, so what you see here is the letter key, 
C-H-I. Um, in English, that would be a letter X. And the R, um, or rather, uh, it's actually more of a P, is the RO. And that's here. So that's the RO. And then IOTA, which is the I. And that is going through here. So ki, ro, iota, and then down at the bottom um, it reads, and actually let me tab over, the letter H, which stands for aten, and then you can make out sort of a G-E-N-E-R-A-T-I-O, in a ratio. So this book this page reads Christi Oten in Arezio, which translates to this is how the birth of Christ came to be, or now the birth of Christ was on this wise. Uh, this is the page that opens the book of Matthew. Uh, this is, simply put, a page from the book of Matthew. Ki, uh, Ro, Iota are the first letters of Christ, whenever you write it in Greek, uh, there at the bottom of the page you can see Christos uh, written in Greek, and the first letters are Kiro Iota. It's a very important page in any medieval manuscript, and you can see that other Bibles in history have also uh, illustrated the Kiro page, but none with as great uh, detail and abstraction as the Book of Kells. All other text in Matthew has been eliminated in favor of just basically these three letters, which take up the whole page. And it's this swirling organic imagery uh, in a style that's often called the insular style of art. Um, yeah, the reason why I love this page so much, uh, obviously it's a beautiful work of art and oh, it's just so intricately detailed. Every time I look at this page, I see something new. Uh, so you can see that the center of the Kiro page is this uh, sort of lozenge shape, this diamond, uh, which occupies the most part of my arm here. Uh, the guy who did this tattoo is Jimmy Butcher down on Bay Street, and I thought for sure whenever I showed him this page and told him I wanted to have a tattoo that he would just, you know, tell me to take my book and get out, but he was way into it and uh, did an amazing job. He didn't put all the details, obviously. Um, the page had to be sort of scaled down a bit, uh, yeah, and actually this whole page, what you're looking at here, is about the size of like a piece of notebook paper. It's like 8 by 10 or so. I've got the dimensions here. Yeah, it's only 9.5 by 12. It's a very small book, and the amount of detail is whew, it's amazing that they were able to get such fine lines and detail. And yeah, you can see like little faces here. Do you see how this is a person whose legs and arms are sort of crisscrossing in and out of each other? It's just full of like bold graphic designs and small, tiny little details. If you look over here on the left, can you tell what this is? It's a couple of uh, butterflies or maybe moths, and they're sort of tugging at a similar diamond shape in their mouth. Uh, down here, we can see three angels sort of along the brace of the key. Uh, it's, it's, it's wings, and you can see it's got a clover sort of uh, going in and out of its wings, which makes sense since this book was in Ireland. Um, down here you can see two more reclining angels. You can see their feet. They're sort of laying on their stomachs, um, talking to one another, holding sacred text in their hands. Uh, and there's another detail that's a lot of people's favorite. Uh, down here at the bottom, right along uh, the top part of this little swirling roundel, we see two cats. And on their backs and in front of them are some mice. So these are cats and mice living in peace, living in harmony, these sort of naturally antagonistic animals here on this page from the Bible living together. Uh, and you can see that the mice are tugging at another little roundel. Uh, some people have suggested that this could represent the sacrament of the, uh, of the Eucharist, the body of Christ. Um, another little detail that I really like is... Um, it's so hard to tell what it is, but this represents an otter, this black otter. Um, you can see its little feet. This is its tail, and it's sort of plunging head down, and it's caught a fish in its mouth. 
Um, there's animals, faces, lions and birds, swirling organic lines. You may have noticed that in the middle of the row, uh, there's a little face of Christ looking out at us. And of course, since this is an Irish Bible, um, it's a redhead Christ, which I think is really fun. It's just an amazing page. Um, and basically, they took so much time and detail on this page because um, the key row pages um, meant to be very important. Um, it, uh, the book of Matthew opens with a genealogy before saying this is how Christ was born. And then it opens with a nativity story. So uh, the fact that the world has been shaped by Jesus Christ. Similarly, this page has been transformed by uh, the ink and the color. Oh, it's just so contained and so planned, but it also seems so improvised. Uh, there's a term in art history called horror vacui, which means like a fear of empty spaces. And we kind of have that here. The the inks are just spilling right over to the edge. Every single corner of this page is just packed with tiny little details. Oh, this book just, it blows my mind that they were able to make this by candlelight with quills and handmade inks in this tiny little monastery. Oh, and the whole book is like this. Um, of course, you know, this is a Bible, and so there are plenty of pages where it's just straight biblical text. Uh, but even in what you might say the boring books of the Book of Kells, they still have uh, fun. Uh, they get creative with the colors, with the lines, taking text, taking these letter forms and elaborating them into these colorful abstract shapes, just pushing that abstraction as far as it'll go. Oh, it's an amazing achievement. But you can see that every once in a while uh, you come across uh, what are called carpet pages. And those are the ones that have some of the most uh, elaborate decorations. And of course, I've kind of stumbled upon a part of the book that doesn't have many. There we go. Yeah, so I, uh, I'll put a link to this uh, website uh, in the comments. Um, but yeah, I encourage you to take a look. And um, I admit, it's a little hard to sort of comprehend what you're looking at sometimes. And uh, whether you're familiar with the books of the Bible or not. Uh, so here on the Dublin College's website, you can see where it says click for more information. And it tells you uh, what this is. This is from the Gospel of Matthew. And it's the symbols for the four evangelists. Uh, I recognize that as the angel, the lion, the ox, and the eagle, which stand for um, Matthew Mark, Luke, and John, respectively. And again, in the tiny little details, just every corner of this book filled with people and eyes and animals and just swirling abstract designs. Um, I've been rambling for a while, but it's an amazing book. Uh, I've seen lots of other people have tattoos of this, um, like this. This is a symbol of St. Luke, who's actually the patron saint of artists. So I've seen a few people get this symbol uh, tattooed on themselves. But yeah, I decided to go all out for a very elaborate um, tattoo of the Key Row, which is uh, my favorite work of medieval art, uh, one of my favorite works of art in general, and definitely my favorite from chapter 16. So yeah, thank you for uh, listening to me. Uh, hopefully it's not too rambly. I tend to get a little bit excited whenever I talk about art, but uh, yeah, thank you for tuning in.